Would you like a free printable template for a favor bag? Keep watching. Hello everyone, my name is Tina, I am the designer and co-founder of Victoria Designs. Last week I showed you how to assemble our printable circus favor bags and someone asked in the comments if they could get the template so they can print a pretty paper on the back and I thought, why not? I'm just going to give it to you. The download link for the free template plus the guidelines is in the description as usual. There's a dishwasher again. The dishwasher doesn't want me to film. Regular watchers of our channel know that I like to throw freebies at you, so if you want to check them out all, just go to the playlist that says freebies. If you like paper crafting like I do and you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, please do. You won't regret it at all. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's the symbol below the video that looks like this. I printed the templates on 160 grams of paper and you see a bit of our logo just fell off, but that's because I made this template for a letter page, so eight and a half by 11, and I printed it on an A4 paper because yeah, we live in Europe. And on the back, I printed one of our Leonardo da Vinci papers. First task, cut it out. And for these little ones, I'm going to use my scissors. And then it's time to fold. And for these little diagonal ones, I'm going to use a regular um, scoring tool or a embossing tool. And now, fold everything. I really like to use my bone folder, but you can use your nails or your fingers if you like. You see, this goes a lot faster <laughs> than when I printed it on 300 grams. But I quite liked that thickness too. Okay. And I think just like last week, I'm going to cut out this piece too to make it a bit easier on myself. I'm going to pre-fold these ones also. So, oh no. They go the other way, they go the other way. Because they fold inside, so just fold it with your finger or just bend it like this. Then it'll go a lot easier and cleaner later on. Just go like this, same on this side, like that, like this and like that. Make sure not to crease any part that doesn't need creasing, like this. First some glue on this part. And glue it on the other end to close the back, like this. And hold it until it's dry. Then do the bottom. So first bend in the little side flaps and put a little glue on them like that so like this okay and fold in one of the bigger tabs well that'll hold for a bit and then put glue straight onto the other tab like that and close. Press the bottom from the inside and then just fold these in carefully 
and start on one end. And that's why I cut out the little square there. So keep going, just fold it in. You can use some glue on the inside, but it really doesn't need that. Save your glue for better purposes. So just keep on going and everything is in there. Now it's a bit crooked like this, but ta-da! Just really go in there and rub the corners like that. There. And then press it like this. And because I pre-folded these lines, it's going to get better. Voila. And basically our baggie is ready. It just needs some handles. But before I'm going to do that, I'm going to add a little ink on the edges. So I got some ink and an ink blender. This is a mini distress ink from Tim Holtz. And it comes in a packet of four. I really like these colors. I'm going in there like this on the edges, really going for it. And you see, it gives a lot of depth. And do that on all the visible edges. Of course, this is all optional, but I just want to show you how far you can take all this. Now for the handles, you can use some cheap shoelaces if you like to, but since this is getting a bit steampunky, I'm going to go that way. So instead of uh, using these cords as handles, I'm going to use this bronze chain, this brass chain, and I'm going to attach it with these brass uh, rings. These are quite large rings. These are 3 eighths of an inch. Yeah, 3 eighths of an inch or in millimeter, one centimeter, so that's 10 millimeter. Yeah. And it needs to be quite large, otherwise you can't reach the, um, the holes. And I'm going to protect these holes with some reinforcement rings that I made in one of my first videos uh, here on YouTube. Check it out, there's a card, I'll put the link below too, if you want to see how I made these. I want these half an inch from the side, the hole, so that's here, this one here, half an inch. So I want my hole here, so I want it top of this line and here. I'm literally going to use this Fiskars one quarter of an inch hole punch for the very first time in my life and it feels so much better than the, the old one that I had. So make sure to find the right place like this. Woo! That went easy. All right, I felt great. Plus, with the other one, I had some indentations. Now I, I, I don't. Let's, let's. I'm going to quickly erase the markings. And then let's add these reinforcement rings. And because it's not white, but inked, like I showed like I've shown in the video, there, it fits a lot better. Now the holes of these are a quarter of an inch, so it matches. If your holes are smaller, I suggest to first stick these on and then use your hole punch. And if you want it super sturdy, and I'm going to do that, Put some on the inside too. Ready. And now to assemble it. Let's see. How long do I want my chains to be? Not too long, because otherwise it will look a bit silly. 
like this. But this chain is quite uh, sturdy, so I'm going to need a second set of pliers to bend this open like this. Yes, in a previous life I made jewelry a lot, so I have these on hand. And I even sold them on Etsy, but that's that's such a long time ago. I did that before I started making digital crafting graphics. Make the second equally as long. Just simply bend it open. Now I'm going to attach these chains with a jump ring. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Open the jump ring through the hole, through the last link, pick your other pliers, close it. And I like to really close it, just hold the jump ring with one ply piece of pliers and then just press a little bit on the top to close the jump ring. And then the same on the other handle. And your super cute baggie is ready. And I'm really digging the metal handles, the chain handles. Look at that. I paused the video for, for a while and I thought, hey, I can embellish this further. And I went to take a look in the steampunk section of our shop. It's very handy if you have your own shop to go shopping. And I found these very pretty steampunk geary numbers and the numbers don't go to 15 because there's, there's actually five pages they go to 60 and the last page is the same but without a number so the gears are completely blank and these are two inch circles so i took my two inch circle punch quick big fat tip set your print percentage a bit higher then you're sure you won't have a white edge going to ink the edges, the same color I used before. And glue the number on there. Now, I'm going to center it. Oh, I like that. Literally, you can make 60 bags all with a different number for if you have a uh, lottery at a party or something. Oh, this is just great. I love it. Dishwasher, I love you because you do all my dishes. But now you're sabotaging my filming. <laughs>